Yo, 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 what's going on guys? Joey Shirkabuck is back here with another video for you guys. And you can already tell I am hyped, man, because today is Thursday, September 10th, and that means the 2020 NFL season is kicking off tonight. And as you, as I told you guys, this Thursday I will be able to make my video. Next Thursday, I'm not sure if I will, but that's uh, besides the point here. Uh, I cannot wait to see what happens here, guys. This is going to be so fun. I mean, the season, they might not make it, but we can enjoy the fun while it lasts. So I'll put it that way. So that being said, guys, let's jump right on into my Week 1 NFL 2020 Game Picks. So, kick off tonight. We got the Texans at the Chiefs. So as you guys know, I usually go over each team's offseason for Week 1 Game Picks. So Texans have not had a good offseason. Traded away DeAndre Hopkins. Traded away, actually, did they trade away DJ Reader? I'm not sure, but they lost DJ Reader. Still are lacking in the offensive line. At the same time, though, after looking it over, the Texans don't have a very good offensive line, but at the same time, I think last year was kind of a fluke because they did have injury issues. Um, I, I forget the guy's name. It's like Titus Howard is coming back, and another guy, I forget his name, and then you also have Laramie Tunzel. So their line should be better, but it's still not great. And their defense is absolute trash and got worse in the offseason. Again, lost DJ Reader, lost Jonathan Joseph. Although he wasn't that good anymore, it's still a loss. They do have Justin Reed and um, apparently J.J. Watts coming back. But he's way over the hill. The Texans' defense is trash. Um, Chiefs, what have they done in the offseason? Um... Don't think the Chiefs have done anything huge if I unless I'm missing something. Of course, they signed Mahomes to the huge 10-year deal or something like that. Um, but other than that, I don't think the Chiefs did anything huge in the offseason. Again, let me know. I, I'm barring comments are still on. Let me know in the comments if I'm missing something. But I think the Chiefs just kept a lot of their guys. Nothing big happened in the offseason. They were able to extend Chris Jones. I think they signed him to a long-term deal. So Chris Jones is staying. Um, Tyron Matthews still there. I think they pretty much have everyone. So Chiefs are pretty much the same team from last year, including the same coach. And I don't see Houston going into Arrowhead and winning this game. And again, by the way, um, Arrowhead apparently doing 22% capacity in terms of fans. They're, they're going to have some fans there with masks and everything, but it's not going to be an empty stadium. And if it's not an empty stadium, you are in trouble if you're, play, if you're the road team playing at Arrowhead. The crowd goes crazy. So although it's going it's to be a lot smaller, though, but I still don't see the Texans going into Arrowhead and winning this game. Not to mention the Chiefs' defense continues to play better and better. I spent, I know it's only week one, but last year, towards the end, they got better down the stretch, and I do expect that to continue here against the Texans tonight. So therefore, I'm going to take the Chiefs 34-21. to I do think the Texans will get off to a hot start, but then the Chiefs are going to explode and just keep it consistent for the rest of the game. So 34-21, Chiefs get the win to start off the season. Uh, next game, this is starting our Sunday football. We have the Bears at the Lions. So the Bears, I they I think they officially named Mitch Trubisky as their week one starter. So Trubisky is going to be playing QB. Um, let's see. Still have uh, defensively. Um, their defense is usually good. It was not as good last year, but I also think that was partially because, first of all, Akeem Hicks got hurt, interior defensive lineman, who's very, very good, but he was out like the whole year, I think. Um... Their offense was so bad last year, so their defense was on the field so much, and it just breaks down eventually. So their defense is good. Kyle Fuller, um, let's see, Khalil Mack, Akeem Hicks, Eddie Jackson, free safety. That, that was his name. So their defense is good. Um, offense still lacking. They have Tariq Cohen. Um, running backs, I, again, they mi really miss Jordan Howard. I feel like they got a running back, but I don't 100% remember. Offensive line still met, but they do still have Allen Robinson, who continues to be significantly underrated. So the Bears, again, I think they're, they're not going to be nearly as good as 2018. Their 2018 Magic was special. I don't think it'll be near, they'll be nearly as good. However, I do think they'll be better than they were last year. I think this year they'll be a 9-7 and seven if I'm stretching it, maybe 10-6, and six, but probably more like an 8-8, eight 9-7 eight, team. So I do think the Bears will be decent. 
Lions, what have they done? Drafted Jeff Akuda, cornerback. Cornerback. Um, what else have they done? Um, I think that that was the main thing. They drafted Jeff Akuda. I feel like they drafted a receiver too, but I'm not a, I'm not a hundred percent remembering. Uh, lost Eric Ebr. Actually, no, excuse me. Eric Ebron was with the Colts earlier. They've been without Eric Ebron for a while. Still have Matthew Stafford, Kenny Galladay. Um, defensively, they lost Darius Slay, I remember. Traded Darius Slay to the Eagles, which is not good. Although Slay kind of had a tough year last year, that's not going to help matters, at least. Um, but again, Jeff Okuda getting drafted. He'll definitely be a starter. Um, so the Jet, so the, uh, excuse me, the Lions have not had a great offseason either. But I believe Carrion Johnson is coming back. And again, still have Matthew, Sca- Matthew Stafford and Kenny Galladay. And as I have been saying, the Lions are a scrappy team. If you guys remember, they got off to a great start last year. But then everything went downhill. I'm pretty sure Stafford got hurt. Carrion Johnson got hurt. Oh, that reminds me. Do they still have Trey Flowers, defensive lineman, defensive end? I'm not sure if they do. But the only issue with the Lions is they still have Matt Patricia, who is the most trash coach ever. But at the same time, we'll see how everything goes. But Matt Patricia is not a good coach. They need to get a new coach. But anyways, I do expect the Lions to lose this one. I think it's going to be kind of a low-scoring, boring game. But I think the Bears are just the better all-around team, better defense. Offense, I might give to the Lions. But again, Bears are better all-around. So I'm going to take the Bears here, 24-17. to Oh boy, we're starting it off early here. Next game, we got the Browns at the Ravens. So... Both teams have made a lot of moves this offseason. <laughs> the past, uh, the, the last game, the teams kind of had boring offseasons. Not the case here. Browns. We'll start with the Browns. Um, got Austin Hooper, tight end from Atlanta. Got Jack Conklin, right tackle from Tennessee. Um, let's see. Uh, Miles Garrett is coming is coming back. Um, oh, uh, apparently Odell Beckham is 100% healthy now. Baker Mayfield, another year, new coach, Kevin Stefanski, Jarvis Landry, right? I don't know if they still have Ricky Seals-Jones, but the Browns' offense is looking pretty good this year. Their main weakness last year, the way I see it, is their um, offensive line. It was kind of trash, but uh, Nick Chubb still did very well because Nick Chubb is incredibly good, and Nick Chubb with an improved offensive line, especially to... Jack Conklin's really good, but he's a better run blocker. He's not a great pass blocker. So I definitely think Chubb will have a huge year running the ball. Uh, J.C. Treader is still there. I think he's battling some injury issues, but he should be back. Um, So the Browns' offense is looking good. Defensively, looking a little dicey. Their front seven is okay. We got Larry Ogunjobi, Sheldon Richardson, Miles Garrett. Their front seven's okay. Secondary is lacking big time, except for um, Denzel Ward. Their secondary is not very good, and I'm pretty sure they're battling injury issues as well. So the Browns, if they're going to win this game, they need to get off to a big start. They need to. I, I get it's what the Titans did, and it totally worked because both teams have a great running back. And what they did was they got out to an early start, gunned it out, and all they had to do was run the ball, and that killed us. That's what you do to beat the Ravens. And the Browns, that's what the Browns need to do because they don't have a very good defense. And as much as I think it kind of overperforms, I still don't think it's going to be that good. So if the Browns are going, again, if the Browns are going to win this, they're going to need a lot of luck to go in their direction. Baltimore, let's see here. We have, um, defensively, they've made a lot of additions. Got Calais Campbell, defensive end from Jacksonville. Derek Wolf, defensive end from Denver. Um, I gotta be honest, guys, the way I see it, I've looked at stats, I've looked at their performance. So, statistically, Calais Campbell has gotten a little bit worse, at least in terms of pass rush. He had, I think, 14 and a half sacks in 2017, 10 and a half in 2018, 6 and a half uh, last year. So, obviously, it's he's regressing. How? Ever, I do think that part of the reason why he was not exactly great last year was because, as I was saying about the Bears, they're... Um, the Jaguars' offense was trash last year, so their defense was on the field a lot, and especially Calais Campbell. He was kind of on the field like every play, so you know he breaks down eventually. So I do think Calais Campbell will have a solid year, but I gotta be honest, the guy who I'm really looking forward to seeing is Derek Wolf. First of all, Wolf is coming off his best year of his career, he's getting better and better. 
And assuming that Calais Campbell might get double teamed to go, I mean, again, it depends on the defense that the Ravens run. But if we run a four-man pass rush, Campbell may be doubled if he rushes through the interior. So I think Wolf may actually have a big year rushing, whether it's from the edge or from the interior. But I do expect Derek Wolf to have a big year. Um, let's go. So right out, uh, outside linebackers, edge rushers, whatever you want to call it. The Ravens were close to getting Genevion Clowney, but unfortunately did not get him. The Titans snagged him. Um, so outside the linebackers, we still have Matthew Judon, Pernell McPhee, Jalen Ferguson, and of course, drafted Patrick Queen, line, middle linebacker out of LSU, and Malik Harrison. So Malik Harrison, I'm not sure if he's going to be starting. Apparently, he's at a very up-and-down training camp. I do not expect him to have a huge... Um, a huge impact, at least, at least for week one. But Patrick Queen is going to be a day one starter because we are lacking middle linebackers. So I definitely think Queen will have a big role. Great coverage guy. Speedy. Really looking forward to that. However, the Browns, for whatever reason, always give the Ravens a hard time. They have the Ravens a huge hard time in 2014. I mean, excuse me, 2014. I meant to say week four of last year. And in week 16, they gave us a hard time for like I'm going to say 28 minutes. And then the last two minutes, the Ravens just exploded. But, and it carried on in the second half too. But the Browns always give the Ravens a hard time. And I think the Browns are going to pull off the upset here. I think Lamar Jackson is going to get off to a cold start. He's going to pick it up in the second half. But the Ravens are going to fall just short. I'm going to take the Browns here 27-20 to in a rather sloppy game. The weather looks rather sloppy as well, so it might contribute. Next game, we have the Colts at the Jaguars. So, a lot of division games here, guys. I mean, I think week one, they like to do a lot of division games, but this is like almost all of these are division games. So, Colts-Jaguars. Uh, Colts definitely look to be the favorites oh, to win the division, and of course, the Jaguars are going to be trash this year, mostly because they're in full rebuild mode. So, I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit. Jaguars, of course. Lost Calais Campbell, lost Yannick Ngakwe. He finally signed with another team. He signed with the Vikings. Uh, still have Gardner Minshew, still have DJ Chark, but they're the Jets, I mean, excuse me, the Jaguars are in total rebuild mode, so they'll be trash this year. Colts got Phillip Rivers. That's not really a big improvement, but they still have arguably the best offensive line in the league. Uh, they got DeForest Buckner to go on the interior line from San Francisco, and their defense is still incredibly underrated. Darius Leonard uh, and, uh, what's his name, Kenny Moore, great slot corner, and I'm pretty sure their safeties are pretty good as well. So the Colts have a very solid defense, still love Marlon Mack. Only thing that's really lacking for the Colts is quarterback and receivers. Rivers is kind of trash, and the receivers are not very good either. T.Y. Hilton is not that good anymore, even if he's still there. I'm not even sure if he is, but also Hilton can't really stay healthy. So Chiefs, I mean, excuse me, the Colts are not looking great this year, but since that their division is such trash, I do think the Colts are going to end up winning the, winning the division, even if they go like 9-7 and seven or 10-6. and six. And although it's in Jacksonville, the Jaguars, as I said, are in full rebuild mode, so I do not see them winning this game. So therefore, I'm going to take the Colts over the Jaguars, 31-20. to 20. Next game, this is the game that a lot of people are looking forward to. I don't usually look forward to Patriots games, but I am kind of looking forward to this one. Dolphins at the Patriots. So Patriots, Cam Newton officially named as the starter. So Miami has had a solid offseason. Drafted Tua to Tukavailoa, even though Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to start. I uh, still have Devontae Parker, Preston Williams, who's actually continuing to get better. I think he's actually going to be sneaky good this year. Um, defensively, got Byron Jones, got Kyle Van Noy, but at the same time, the Patriots lost Kyle Van Noy, trade, uh, gave him to the Dolphins. I don't know if it was a trade or a release, but anyways, the thing about Kyle Van Noy is, will he be another player who is only good with Belichick, and then when they, when they go to another team, they suck? I don't know. I'm afraid so, but I really hope don't hope that's the case because Kyle Van Noy is a really cool guy, and he was really good with New England, great guy off the field. So I really hope that Kyle Van Noy does do well with Miami, but unfortunately it might not happen. He might be a guy who's a fluke, who's a fluke because he's only good with Belichick and then is no good elsewhere. But regardless, the Dolphins, I mean, they didn't get worse. I mean, last season they were kind of in rebuild mode. They traded a lot of guys away. But I actually think the Dolphins, they're not going to be great this year, but they could be a 7-9 and nine team. I think they're going to miss the playoffs, but they could be a, a, a mediocre team that's scrappy and beats random good teams, just like last year where they beat New England in Week 17 at Gillette. Patriots have not had a good offseason. Before we get to Cam Newton, um, let's see. 
lost Kyle Van Noy, lost Jamie Collins. Again, that's not a huge loss, but lost Jamie Collins, lost Kyle Van Noy, lost Tom Brady. But um, the only advantage that I see for the Patriots right now is their offensive line was not good last year, but it was mostly because of injuries. Uh, David Andrews and Shaq Mason got hurt, I believe, and I believe they're coming back this year as well. So, that being said, it should be... Sorry, I'm just trying to pull up the schedule here. I lost it for a sec. So, that being said, I do think it will be... Uh, their offensive line will be better this year. And I do think Sony Michelle will have a better year. He kind of had a crappy year last year. I think he'll be better. And the Patriots' defense, though, is lacking because they have also had a lot of opt-outs. Dante Hightower opted out. Patrick Chung opted out. So, their defense is not looking great. I know they have Stephon Gilmore, Devin McCourty, and Jason McCourty, but they also... Uh, and they do a Belichick, but I don't think the, Patri the Patriots defense continues to regress, and it's worrying me significantly. But in New England, I know Miami beat beat the Patriots at Gillette last year. I don't see it happening again. I'm going to take the Patriots here with Cam Newton as the new quarterback. I think he's going to get off to a great start, and I'm going to take the Patriots here 27-17. to Next game, we have the Packers at the Vikings. So as I said earlier, Vikings signed, got Yannick and Gakwe. Um... Still have Kirk Cousins, lost to Fon Diggs, but they also drafted Justin Jefferson, wide receiver. They still have Adam Thielen. Defensively, uh, they lost Xavier Rhodes. I don't know if they still have Trey Waynes. They still have Anthony Barr. And they did get Michael Pierce, but he's hurt. Yannick Ngakwe still. Um, they lost Everson Griffin as well, I think. I'm pretty sure he signed with the Cowboys, I want to say. So their defense is... De oh, Harrison Smith, too. They're, the thing about the Vikings defense is it's good, but it kind of has their rough moments, I feel like. it. it you, again, it's usually good, but at, at sometimes it gets absolutely destroyed, which is kind of weird. But the Vikings defense usually is good. Offense, uh, again, still have Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook. Nothing's changed there, but I don't know how good their offense is going to be this year. They still kind of have a mediocre offensive line, and I kind of feel like that held them back last year. Their line was kind of trash. So, it, that does worry me. And, let's remember, the last time the Packers played the Vikings in Minnesota, too, um, the Packers defensive line manhandled the Vikings O-line. It got absolutely demolished, especially Zedarius Smith. He just killed them. Packers uh, offseason, if they had a good offseason, meh. Lost Geronimo Allison. I'm pretty sure they did get Christian Kirksey, though, linebacker. So, have Zedarius Smith, Kenny Clark, Preston Smith. Secondary's lacking. Jair Alexander is okay. I think he's a little, might be a little bit overrated. Kevin King's meh. Tremont Williams is meh. So, their, second, their secondary overall is just meh. But they do have a solid front seven. And Zedarius Smith coming off his best year of his career. He was incredible last year. So, I do expect the Packers to take this win. I think it's going to be a sloppy game. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to play well. But I am going to take the Packers here. 21 to 13. Again, a sloppy game. Uh, let's see. Next game, guys, we have the Raiders at the Panthers. Again, Las Vegas Raiders now. No longer Oakland. So I don't really know much about these teams. So the Panthers, what, who do they have? I, I, apparently, Cam Newton played one game last year before getting hurt. So I don't know who's going to be the starter. I guess it's going to be Kyle Allen. Of course, I still have Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore. Defensively, Luke Keekley retired, so that's not good. I'm pretty sure they drafted a defensive lineman, though. I forget his name, but I'm pretty sure they drafted someone. So the Panthers, I mean, I don't really see any reason why they will be good because, I mean, their offense looks decent. Uh, Chris, again, Christian McCaffrey's excellent and DJ Moore, but it doesn't look like anything special. Um, Las Vegas, <laughs> I got to remember now. What have they done? Still have Derek Carr, still have Josh Jacobs, um, who's coming, who came off a great rookie year. He was probably the best rookie running back last year. I mean, that might not be saying much because there were not many good rookie running backs last year, but Josh Jacobs was very good. We'll put it that way. Great rookie year. Uh, offensive line is not great besides Rodney Hudson. Defensively, it's kind of trash. I don't really know anyone remotely good on the uh Raiders defense. I don't think they still have Gary on Conley either. So their defense is not very good. So the Raiders are going to be met this year. But again, they are a scrappy team. They didn't have much last year. And they still were, I think, like 6-10, and 7-9, and nine, something like that. So the Raiders are, again, they're a scrappy team. They get the job done with not much to work with. So I still expect the Raiders to be, a, I guess, just like last year, 6-10, and 7-9. 
Um, but at the same time, going into Carolina, I don't really see any reason like who to take here. I guess I'll just take the Panthers because of the home team, I guess. So I'll take the Panthers here, uh, 24 to 17. Not a game that's exact, that's exactly very exciting, but yeah, Panthers 24 17. Next game, Jets at the Bills. So the Bills got Stephon Diggs from um, Minnesota. Defensively, has not changed much. Though they still have a great defense. Tredavious White, um, Matt, Matt Milano, Tremaine Edmonds, Jerry Hughes. They, they, yeah, their defense is very good. Um, Jets actually had a decent defense last year, but they did trade away Jamal Adams uh, to Seattle, and then they got Bradley McDougal in return. At the same time, though, the Jets... Um, offense got a tad better. They signed Connor McGovern, center from uh, Denver, who's pretty good. And I'm pretty sure they drafted a couple linemen as well. Because their offensive line was their main weakness last year. It was absolute trash. Um, their line should be a tad better this year. Le'Veon Bell, they still have. I, as much as I think Bell is not going to do much, he should be a little bit better this year. Because his line was trash last year. We'll see how he does. Um... Sam Darnold still, who I think is rather overrated, but he's still there. He'll be the starter. Um, receivers are lacking. They don't have Robbie Anderson anymore. Oh, that reminds me. Robbie Anderson went to the Panthers. So the Panthers have DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. But anyways, yeah, no longer have Robbie Anderson. Um, they have Jamison Crowder. But again, he's not a number one wide receiver. And I'm not sure if they still have Quincy and Nuno. I don't think they do. And Anunua was not bad, but he just could not stay healthy. He got hurt literally every single year. So, Jets don't have much to work with. Defense is meh. Uh, I'm pretty sure Awaso, who they got from Baltimore, is hurt as well. Front seven is not very good either. So, I'm going to take the Bills here. I think the Bills are going to win the division. I'm not going to say easily, but they're going to win this game pretty easily. And I think that they'll win the division over the Patriots as well. So, I'm going to take the Bills here, guys. Um... 31 to 10. I think it's gonna not gonna be very close. Next game, we have the Seahawks at the Falcons. Seahawks, as I said, got Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams uh do not have Jadeveon Clowney anymore, obviously. Uh Bobby Wagner still. Um the defense is still not very good. Again, they lost Bradley McDougal uh in the trade for Jamal at uh, in the trade, and then Jamal Adams trade. But again, Jamal Adams is very magical, and they still have Bobby Wagner. He might be aging, but he's still very, very good. Offensively, they're still strong. Offensive line is not good, but other than that, I mean, Chris Carson's decent. Just need to fix his fumbling issues. DK Metcalf, great rookie year. Tyler Lockett was okay. He's just too inconsistent. But the Seahawks, and of course, Russell Wilson, who can literally do anything. And that's why I think the Seahawks are always going to be good for a while, because Russell Wilson at peak era can just... They're not nearly as good as the Brady Belichick dynasty. In fact, they're nowhere close. But they they're a scrappy team. They always find a way to get the job done with not having much to work with. So that being said, I think that's going to continue this year. Russell Wilson will still be uh, will still be pretty good, and I think that they're going to win this game over Atlanta. Atlanta um, got Todd Gurley, but I, he's just so, he's just too inconsistent. Uh, still have Julio Jones, still have um, Calvin Ridley. Lost Austin Hooper, though. He's on Cleveland, as I said. Defensively is really, really not good. I don't know if they still have Devontae Casey. Um, Deion Jones was good as rookie year. Now he's trash. Um, so the Falcons' defense is not very good. I, I I think they still have Grady Jarrett, though, who's actually a pretty good interior lineman. But the Falcons don't have much to work with. Matt Ryan is pretty good, but I think he can only do so much with a bad offensive line besides Alex Mack. So I am going to take the Seahawks here over the Falcons. Going to go Seattle here, guys. Uh, 28-17. to Next game, we have the Chargers at the Bengals. Uh, Bengals. Drafted Joe Burrow. Drafted T. Higgins. Still have Joe Mixon. Uh, are getting Jonah Williams back, tackle uh, for the Bengals. Again, the Bengals' offensive line was garbage last year. It should be better. I mean, at least it's, it will help with Jonah Williams. And I don't know if they drafted any linemen this year. They might have. But again, the biggest the biggest eyes are on Joe Burrow, okay? For number one overall pick, quarterback out of LSU, uh, taken by the Bengals. Um, so yeah, the Bill, I mean, excuse me, the Bengals, not going to be great this year. They're still going to be a 5-11, and 6-10 and 10 team. But they should be maybe a touch better than they were last year. And that's not really saying much because they were garbage last year and they have been for a while. But, you know, that's just a little bit of an improvement. Um, Chargers. So, 
All I've been saying is how the Chargers are going to be great this year. They've had a great offseason. But, unfortunately, that's changing a bit because, as most of you guys know, Derwin James is now on IR and he's going to miss the whole year. Uh, Derwin James had, I forget what the name of the injury was, but he, he got like a leg injury or something like that. Derwin James is out for the year, which really sucks because he was a huge leader to that defense and the Chargers were set up for a big renaissance year. Losing Derwin James hurts. He is a great safety, probably the second best strong safety in the game behind Jamal Adams. So that really, really hurts. Um, let's see what the Chargers have on offense. So, drafted Justin Herbert, but I still think, um, what's his name? Tyrod Taylor is going to be the starter. Um, offensive line is okay. They got Brian Belaga, no longer have Russell Okun. Their line is met. It's okay. Uh, Austin Eckler is now going to be the number one running back. We'll see how that goes. Receiving core is still great, though. They uh, extended Keenan Allen. They signed, him, they signed him to an extension. So Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, who is one of the best contested contested catchers in the league, I would say. Great at ca- catching contested balls. So Mike Williams is pretty good. And defensively, I mean, their front seven still looks pretty good. I don't know if they still have Brandon Meebane, but they have Joey Boza, Melvin Ingram, if he can prove himself, he's just, the problem with Melvin Ingram is he's too inconsistent. He was not good last year, but at the same time, the same argument comes in. Just the main reason why the Chargers defense wasn't great last year was mostly because their offense was horrendous. So it, you know, their defense was on the field so much and it breaks down. So no Derwin James now. I don't know who's going to step in. That's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, secondary is still solid, though. They have Casey Hayward, who's very, very good and continues to actually get better and better, even though he might be aging a little bit. Desmond King, who's still a little bit overrated, but still a decent corner. Average. But Casey Hayward is a huge leader. I don't know if they still have Denzel Perryman, middle linebacker. They might. But the Chargers defense still is solid. Offense is solid, so I think they'll be a 9-17 and this year or so. But regardless, they're definitely going to beat the Bengals because the Bengals are just... They made some improvements, but they're still not there yet. So I'm going to take the Chargers here, guys. Um, We're going to go Chargers 27-17. to I may have done that before, but 27-17 Chargers. Next game, guys, a game that a lot of people are looking forward to. We got the Cardinals at the Niners. So, as you guys know, I would say, at least in my opinion, has to change. Kyler Murray getting significantly overhyped. He's getting a lot of hype because the Browns got DeAndre Hopkins uh, at a steal trade. Um, they still have Christian Kirk. Of course, do no longer have David Johnson. Offensive line is still lacking. Uh, and their running back, I think it's going to be Kenyon Drake is the number one running back still, who's okay, still kind of inconsistent, but Drake's, but Drake's decent. Defensively, though, their their uh, defense is trash. Besides Chandler Jones, there's like no one good on that defense. So that being said, I don't think the Cardinals are going to be great this year. I think they're getting way overhyped. Their offense should be solved. Again, their defense is trash besides Chandler Jones. Uh, Niners, I mean, they did lose a Super Bowl last year. I mean, and their offseason, again, they did lose DeForest Buckner, which is a big loss. But they still have Nick Boza. Um, do I still have Dre Greenlaw? I'm not 100% sure. But they have uh, D Ford, I think. Fred Warner. Richard Sherman, who had a big renaissance here last year. We'll see if he's still good this year. I'm not sure he will be, but we'll see. The 49ers defense is good. It was very, very good last year. Uh, started to regress a little bit towards the end. We'll see if that carries on into this year. I hope it doesn't, but it might. Um, offensively, though, nothing has really changed. They still have a great offensive line. Mediocre quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo, but they still have um, running backs Raheem Mostert. They lost Matt Breida to the Dolphins, by the way. The Dolphins got Matt Breida, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Mostert will be the starting running back. Receivers, Debo Samuel is, I think, coming back. I'm pretty sure Emmanuel Sanders retired, if I recall correctly. So no more Emmanuel Sanders. So I have George Kittle, who's an absolute monster. Um, so yeah, Debo Samuel, Kendrick Bourne. The receivers are decent, but just a lot of unproven guys. Samuel was actually pretty good last year. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not sure if any of these guys are good number one wide receivers. So we'll see what happens. But the Niners, they're not going to be as good as they were last year, as uh, their offseason has showed us. But I still think they'll be a solid 9-17. and 17. So that being said, now nah, eight, nine, seven, ten, and six. So that being said, they're at home here. I'm gonna take them over the Cardinals, um, thirty to twenty-three. I think it's gonna be a decent game, but I'm gonna take the Niners. 
I would say this is probably the game that everyone's looking forward to, though. We got the Bucks at the Saints. So the Bucks have totally changed. Got Tom Brady as their quarterback. Got Rob Gronkowski. Drafted Tristan Wirfs. Tackle. Still have Ryan Jensen. Offensive line is decent. Running backs are not really that good. Actually, I take that back. As you, most of you guys know, the Bucks actually just signed Leonard Fournette, who I think has been very underrated. He was with Jacksonville, had a hard time staying healthy, but he also never really had a great offensive line. I think that's going to change. I think Fournette's going to have a big renaissance year. And of course, they have Chris Godwin and Mike Evans as receivers, Gronk as a tight end. Uh, defensively, total roller coaster because they probably have the best front seven in the league. It's either them or the Steelers. The Steelers or the Bucks have the best front seven because, let's see, the uh, Bucks, Vita Vey and Adama Kung Su, Shaquille Barrett, who had an incredible year last year. He had 19 and a half sacks. So Shaquille Barrett, Vita Vey and Adama Kung Su, uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, I think, is still there. Devin White, Levante David. So their front seven is excellent. Their secondary is trash, which is kind of unfortunate because if it was at least solid, it would cap off a great defense. But unfortunately, this their secondary is not very good, but their uh, front seven is, again, excellent. Uh, and that's the same thing with the Steelers. I mean, I know we're not talking about the Steelers right now. Great front seven as well. We'll get to them in a sec. Um, so the Bucks have had a great offensive lo- I mean, excuse me, great offseason. Everything has gone in their favor. Saints, what have they done? Uh, Alvin Kamara's coming back. He should be 100% healthy now. Still have a solid offensive line. Teron Armstead, Ryan Ramchak, who's very, very good. It's just their interior line is kind of meh, but their exterior line is excellent. So the Saints should be decent. I shouldn't say that. They'll be good. They'll be another 11-5, 12-4 team. But I always question the Saints going into the playoffs because they always struggle. Drew Brees always struggles in the playoffs, and that's never good for them. So that being said, um, I think the Saints are going... To make a good fight here, they still have Michael Thomas. I think they still have Ted Ginn. Defense is just, again, inconsistent. It was solid last year, but it choked in, against the Vikings. Cousins drove right down the field and scored. Drew Brees didn't touch the ball in overtime last year. But their defense has pieces, at least. Cameron Jordan, who was excellent last year, had like, I think, 14 and a half or 15 and a half sacks. One of the two. I think 15 and a half. Um, Marcus Davenport, solid interior lineman, Marshawn Lattimore, um, Demario Davis, he might have retired, but if, if not, they still have Demario Davis, so the Saints defense is okay, they, they have their moments, but this is gonna be a great game, man, the more I think about it, the better the game I think it's gonna be, because Drew Brees usually struggles against great defenses, but at the same time, I think that if the Saints can get a running game going, it's going to be really big because, again, though, getting a running game going against the Bucks is much easier said than done because their run defense is so good. But at the same time, I think that the Saints are still going to come out with this one. The Bucks again, Going to be better this year. I still think they're getting overhyped, but the Bucks should come out strong. And I also think the Bucks are going to get off to a great start. But Drew Brees at home, week one, he almost always plays well. So I am going to take the Saints here over the Bucks. I think it's going to be a great game, but I'm going to take the Saints here, guys. 30 to 27, probably on a game winning field goal over the Bucks. Great matchup in week one here. This is our Sunday night football game, guys. Uh, by the way, I know this, is, this video is really long, so for any of you guys who are standing here for the whole video, really do appreciate it. I'm trying not to bore you guys to death. But Dallas and the Cowboys at the Rams for Sunday night football. So, Rams, still have Aaron Donald, obviously, extended Jalen Ramsey to a fat contract, guys. I, my opinion hasn't changed. Ramsey is just so overrated in so many senses. And again, if they're gonna and at the same time though, oh actually I'm gonna I'm gonna counter that. I think that overpaying Ramsey is not a good idea because Aaron Donald is much more valuable than Jalen Ramsey. And I, I don't know what Aaron Donald's contract is, but you're gonna pay Aaron Donald whatever the hell he wants for money, man, because that guy is an absolute monster. And is a, literally a defensive player of the year candidate like every single year. Aaron Donald is absolutely incredible. So I don't think overpaying Ramsey was a good idea because they might. I don't know if they're going to have enough cap space left over to extend Aaron Donald. Again, I don't know what Aaron Donald's contract is, but I'm just saying that in the future, I'm not sure if, that's, if that was the right call. 
Uh, but again, Paige on whatever he wants. Defensively, though, they're kind of got worse, I feel like. Eric went over tired. They still have Nikel Roby Cohen, but he's not a very good number one corner. He's a slot guy. Um... I kind of make sense, actually. His name's Nickel Roby Coleman. Nickel Roby Coleman. It actually makes sense. Slot guy. Um, res- um, excuse me. Corners, other than that, I'm not sure. They don't have Janoris Jenkins anymore, I don't think. Obviously don't have Marcus Peters either. And uh, they do have Jalen Ramsey. But is Jalen Ramsey really going to really gonna continue to be good? Because he was not very good last year. I know he was adjusting to a new defense, but I think we're going to start to see uh, a, a regress in Jalen Ramsey's skills. So I would not hold my breath on Jalen Ramsey if I'm a Rams fan. Um, Rams offensively haven't done much. They lost Todd Gurley, still have Jared Goff, Robert Woods. They did lose Brandon Cooks. Um, I think they still have Tyler Higbee as a tight end. Offensive line is still lacking. Besides Andrew Whitworth, their offensive line is not very good. So the Rams, again, I always think the Rams are underrated. I think Jared Goff is incredibly underrated. He gets too much hate for a bad offensive line. But the Rams, unfortunately, have not had a great offseason. I haven't really been following their draft. But we'll see how everything evolves. Um, Clay Matthews, before I move on to the, to the Cowboys. Clay Matthews is, I think... He was close to signing with Denver, but it didn't follow through. But I'm pretty sure Clay Matthews is a free agent. So I don't think Clay Matthews will be on the team this year on the Rams. But we'll see what happens. Uh, that being said, guys, Dallas uh, drafted C.D. Lamb. Um, other than that, I don't really think that they've really... I mean, they still have Dak Prescott. Lost Travis Frederick because he retired. Defensively lost Byron Jones, which is a big loss. Still have Marcus Lawrence, etc., uh, and Leighton Van Der Esch. So the Cowboys and Rams both are just kind of mediocre teams. But I am actually going to take the Rams here as a little bit of an upset to beat the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys might be favored, but I am going to take the Rams here, guys. Um, 31 to 27. I think it's going to be a little bit high scoring, and I'm going to take the Rams. All right, guys, we are now into our pair of Monday night football games. So Steelers at the Giants. Um, Pittsburgh. Has everything's gone right for them in the offseason? Um, healthy Juju again. I think Juju's getting way overhyped, but healthy should be better. Ben Roethlisberger getting way overhyped, but he's coming back, so they don't we'll have to deal with Mason Rudolph or Devlin Hodges. And their defense is just absolutely incredible across the board. Steven Nelson, Joe Hayden, Mega Fitzpatrick in the secondary, Cameron Hayward, T.J. Watt, uh, Stephon Tuitt. Devin Bush, their their defense is just so good. Probably the best in the league if it's not the Niners. And the Giants, I mean, they literally have no one besides Saquon Barkley and Evan Ingram. They just don't. They have no one. Daniel Jones is okay, but nothing special. And I don't really need to talk much about this one, guys. I think it's pretty obvious who's going to win this one. The Giants are at home, but I don't think it's going to make mu- that much of a difference. I'm going to take the Steelers here to kind of manhandle them. Um, 38 to 17. I don't think it's going to be very close. Last game, guys. This one is going to be a close game. I'm really looking forward to it. Titans at the Broncos. So the Broncos, of course, Drew Locke, the most overhyped quarterback going in, but we'll see how well he does. Um, offensive line is still lacking. And unfortunately, the Broncos were looking solid, but now it's starting to go downhill. Von Miller. I think he got like a season-ending lower leg injury yesterday, which absolutely sucks, man. Because Von Miller, he might be old, but he's still very, very good. So losing Von Miller is going to hurt a lot. He's out for, I think, like the whole year. Um, however, they lost Derek Wolf, but they did get Jarrell Casey in return. Got A.J. Boye, but lost Chris Harris. They still have Justin Simmons, who's one of the best. He's probably the best free safety in the league. Um... So their defense is okay, but it's taken a big blow after losing uh, Von Miller. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure Bradley Chubb is coming back, outside linebacker. I don't know if he's a pass rusher or a coverage guy, but he is coming back. He was out like the whole year last year. He is coming back offensively. Cortland Sutton, Phillip Lindsay, Drew Locke, as I have said. So their offense is still looking pretty good. I think the Broncos, again, as a team, are getting kind of overhyped, but I think the Broncos will be a 7-9, and 8-8 eight and eight team this year. The Titans are getting significantly overhyped. And as I, I'll say it again, they have not had a good offseason. They just haven't. I know they did just get Jadeveon Clowney, but they still have, that doesn't fix their losses. Lost Jarrell Casey, lost uh, Logan Ryan, 
lost Jack Conklin, and I just, as the Chiefs have showed us, if you take Derrick Henry out of the equation, the Titans are absolute trash. Again, don't get me wrong, taking Derrick Henry out of the equation is very, very hard to do, but the Titans are very one-dimensional. If you take out, if you beat their strength, you're, done, you're, you're in perfect shape. Their defense is way too inconsistent. We'll see how they do this year with Jadavion Clowney. But I just, I get it's too inconsistent. Did well against Baltimore. Actually, not really, if you look at the stats. And got absolutely manhandled by Kansas City. So, it's up and down. But I am going to take uh, the Broncos here. Uh, I know, again, this might have been because of Mariota. But um, the last time the Titans and the Broncos played each other, it was last year. The Broncos dominated defensively. Derrick Henry was absolutely shut down. If that's the case, Broncos are absolutely winning this game. And I think, I don't think they're going to shut down Derrick Henry, but I do think they're going to keep him relatively in check like the Chiefs did. The Chiefs didn't shut him down, but they did keep him in check, as I like to call it. And at home, I am going to take the Broncos here to win this one. Um, 24 to 20. It's going to be a great game, but I'm going to take the Broncos here to edge them out. And guys, boy, this was a long video. That is going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And boy, I am so excited to get this NFL season rolling. Thank you all so much for all the support. I really do appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace out. Have a great day. And welcome to the 2020 NFL season.